Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cool do-it-yourself art journal using metallic embossed fabric and canvas boards as your book covers. If you haven't yet seen the video on how to create this book cover, there'll be a link in the description. These mixed media canvas boards have been prepared for the binding process. It's time to create three strips of chipboard that will serve as a sort of hinging mechanism, one strip on either side and then a spine down the center. To begin this process, I'll need to trim down this piece of chipboard to slightly shorter than 10 inches and then we can cut our three strips. I've chosen to trim my chipboard at nine and three quarters of an inch. Once I've verified that measurement, I can cut away the excess and now I can begin to trim away the strips of cardboard that I need for my binding. My side strips need to be three quarters of an inch each. Yours can be whatever size you'd like. For the spine of the book, however, I'm going to create a one and a half inch wide strip of chipboard. This will allow me to create a binding mechanism that will have seven separate pages, each of which are separated by the space of an eighth of an inch. And that's going to work well for my art journal. Once the three strips have been cut, it's time to place the holes in the two side strips. And I need to do that by lining them up with the original book covers and then just tracing those holes. I've joined the chipboard strips together with some washi tape just to make sure that everything stays in place while I'm doing this work. Next, I'll just reach for the crocodile and using the larger side of the hole punch, I'll make sure that those holes are punched out and lined up correctly with the existing book covers. And I can tell that by putting it in place and then holding it up and making sure I can see all the way through those holes. This one looks good, time to check the other one. And yep, it's a go. I'm pulling off that washi tape and reattaching it after I've created a space of about an eighth of an inch between the three strips. Now I'll transfer the length of the binding to a piece of heavyweight cardstock. That cardstock becomes the binding mechanism, which I learned from Laura at Follow the Paper Trail. Go check out her channel, it's amazing. The heavyweight cardstock has been trimmed down, so it's now eight and a half inches wide by nine and three quarter inches long. And I'm going to score the cardstock beginning in the very center at half an inch on either side of that center line, and then an additional eighth of an inch on either side of those first two lines. And then I'll repeat that same pattern across the entire page. The half inch wide score marks represent the tabs or fins that we'll use to bind our pages into the book. And the eighth of an inch scores represent the little flat channels that will separate the pages from each other. If that seems confusing, I apologize. Here's a graphic that may make it a little easier to understand. And I promise as we go through the rest of the process, it will all begin to make sense. Now that the score lines are all in place, it's time to begin using them to set up the actual binding. And I'm reaching for a bone folder and beginning at the center score line there. And then I'm drawing that up into a mountain fold, reinforcing that with my fingertips. And now I'll reach for the bone folder again and reinforce that fold on both sides, bending it over one way and then the other and reinforcing. The next fold takes place on the other side of the eighth of an inch score that we created during the initial scoring phase. You'll see what I mean in a minute. We're creating an additional mountain fold next to the one we created first. And between the two is a sort of trench with a flat bottom that represents that eighth of an inch. Once you've completed reinforcing the mountain folds across this entire piece, you'll end up with something that looks like this. And when it's folded and adhered properly, it will have a flat bottom that will adhere to the spine of the book. So to begin adhering it, I'm using good quality double-sided tape and placing it 
right along the edge of each of the mountain folds next to the eighth of an inch area. Repeat that for each and every one of the mountain folds. Once the double-sided tape is in place, make sure to burnish it firmly down using your bone folder. And then peel away the backing paper, one strip at a time, and bring that mountain fold together, press it into place, and reinforce it with your bone folder. Continue the process of adhering each of the mountain folds into place permanently with the double-sided tape and reinforcing that adherence with your bone folder. And you'll begin to establish the fins or tabs and channels that make up this binding method. This series of folds will result in a spine that's exactly one and a half inches wide. It will provide seven of the fins or tabs for pages and each page will have a space of an eighth of an inch between them, allowing for embellishing on the art journal pages. The back of this construction will be nice and smooth and perfect for adhering onto the chipboard spine. Now we can set this piece aside and concentrate on decorating the exterior of our book spine using this metallic embossed fabric. If you haven't yet seen the video on how to create that, I'll place a link to that in the description. I'm trying to center the pattern on the back of my spine, so I'm fiddling around with placement until I've decided it's just right. I'm using this small ruler to establish a margin around the exterior edge of the book binding. Next, I cut the fabric down to size. I'll check once more to see if the placement is to my liking, and it is. Now it's time to glue the spine mechanism to the fabric. I'm using 3-in-1 glue by Beacon for this. Fabri-Tac would work, as would E6000, whatever you have on hand. Place the chipboard adhesive side down onto the back of the fabric and press it firmly into place. You can use a brayer to help reinforce that adhesion. I like to apply the brayer from both the back and the front side of the fabric. Now that the chipboard strips have been adhered to the fabric, we can remove the little temporary strips of washi tape. In order to fold the fabric over the edges of the binding, I'm going to snip away the corners of the fabric allowing it to lie flat once it's folded into place. I'll repeat this process for all of the corners, putting a slight angle into those clips. Now we're ready for adhesive. I'll begin with the long sides of this construction, adding plenty of adhesive, smoothing it out, and then gently but firmly pulling the fabric around that chipboard and pressing it firmly into place before coming back with a brayer to tighten everything up. We'll repeat this process for the other long edge of the binding. And of course, I can't resist picking it up and playing with it at this point. I just love how this is gonna turn out. I'm very excited. All right, let's finish up the end flaps, get those glued, pressed into place, and then brayered. I just love the way the metallic embossed fabric feels. This is gonna be really cool. Okay, the next step is going to be piercing holes through the fabric. It's easy to find the holes that we've already cut into the chipboard by just pressing against the fabric with your fingernail. That will reveal the shape and placement of those holes, and then you can use your awl to pierce through both layers of fabric. Okay, now it's time to line up our new spine with the book covers that we created. I'll be using a sort of unconventional method to put this together. The basis of the method is going to be the use of something that you may not be familiar with. 
It's called a Chicago screw. They are fabulous and you are going to love them. To begin the process though, I'm applying adhesive, lining up the holes, and making sure that everything is glued into place prior to using the Chicago screws. I always keep my brayer handy when doing jobs like this. It's just one of the best ways to make sure you get a perfect connection between the glued surface and the binding. Okay, now that that adhesive is in place, it's time to play with the hardware. And these are the Chicago screws. I'll make sure there's a link to where you can get them too, because they are awesome. They come in two bags, each containing one half of the mechanism. One end is threaded with a Phillips head and the other receives the threads. So you place one end through the hole like that. Now these require slightly larger than the standard crocodile size holes. So I used my awl to increase the girth of these holes so that they would accept the base of the Chicago screws. And then you just line up the other end and you screw it into place. I just love the juxtaposition of these industrial pieces along with the feminine and vintage looking fabric and this binding is not going anywhere. Let's move on to the back cover. Applying the adhesive, slipping the binding into place over the holes making sure that they're aligned and then once everything's aligned apply the Chicago screws and we can move on to the interior of this binding. Here's a glimpse of how it's going to look once we've got the binding in place. I want to make sure that this is a very sturdy construction, so I'm reaching for rayon seam binding tape. I'm just using black because I like it and I have it on hand. And I'm going to reinforce these areas that hinge with a strip of seam binding tape on either side held in place by 3-in-1 adhesive. I'm just using a bone folder to press that seam binding tape deep into the groove. This will help to create a long-lasting, sturdy hinge system for our binding. And once the seam binding is in place, we can just trim away the excess. If you'd like to add a ribbon bookmark, now's the time to do that. I'm going to add one by just gluing it in place at the top of the binding and making sure it's centered. Now we can install the system that's going to hold the pages of our art journal. And again, I'm just using the same adhesive to create a nice thick layer all along the spine, smoothing that out, and then carefully align that construction along the spine, pressing it gently into place at first, and then more firmly by opening up each of the tabs or fins and pressing firmly along each of the trenches. I'd like to add a simple ribbon closure to my art journal. So I'm defining the center point on each of the exterior book covers and making a mark. I'll be incorporating lengths of latex lace as a finishing touch to these inside covers. I'd like the ribbon closure to intersect with the defined edge of part of this lace design. So I'm placing the ribbon on the bottom layer, placing the latex lace on top, and finding out exactly where I want that ribbon to lie. Now I'll just hold it in place, move the ribbon aside, and apply adhesive. I'm using a different design of latex lace along the leading edge of the front cover. And here you see me just playing with the placement of the lace and making sure that the ribbon intersects with that lace pattern precisely where I'd like it to appear. And now it's time to begin gluing everything in place, beginning with the ribbon. Next, we can move on to the final layer, which is the latex lace. I'm using tacky glue to apply the lace to the inside covers directly over the ribbon 
that we just glued down. I like to use a slightly dampened brush for this operation. It helps to smooth out that layer of adhesive. I'll use the brayer to make sure we have good contact between the adhesive, the lace, and the substrate. And next, I'll come back in with more tacky glue and my dampened brush to make sure that all the fiddly bits have plenty of adhesive applied behind them. Now it's time to repeat that procedure on the interior front of the book cover. Applying adhesive, aligning the latex lace pattern, and pressing it all into place with a brayer as the final stage. Now I'll allow that adhesive to set up for a few minutes, and then it's time to come back and trim away the lace. The lace cuts very easily. You could do this with scissors if you like, but I like this thin bladed craft knife. And that, my friends, is the binding method. A great way to use two inexpensive 8x10 canvas boards as your book covers. Now, if you'd like to go ahead and mount some pages into your art journal, you can easily do that using double-sided tape. I'll be mounting 14 of my favorite background papers into this art journal and they will serve as the starting points for more elaborate journal pages to come. To prepare for mounting those background papers into the journal itself, I'm adding the double stick tape along each one of the fins that we've established. On the last fin, I will apply that double sided tape on the opposite side just to remain consistent from the front and the back. This way, the pages will be enclosed within those fins, whether you open this from the back or the front. I'm reinforcing each of those strips of double-sided tape. And now I want to mount my first set of pages, so I'm going to remove the backing paper. I prepared my background papers by cutting them to size and gluing them back to back. This way I have a finished side on both sides of this page. So with careful planning, you can work this out to put complementary or harmonious designs across from each other as you open the pages. Now once that first page has been put in place against the adhesive, reinforce it with the bone folder from both the back and the front. There we go, our first page is fully mounted. Now let's do the rest of the pages. The eighth of an inch gap that exists between each of these pages because of the trenches that we created will allow me to add three-dimensional embellishments to each one of these art journal pages without worrying too much about the book becoming too bulky. I don't know about you, but I make more background papers than you can shake a stick at, and it's really gratifying to find a way to incorporate them into a journal like this one. They'll make excellent starting points for more elaborate journal pages in the future. This project is now complete. I just love our do-it-yourself art journal made with metallic embossed fabric and Chicago screws. I think that's super cool and it's very functional as well. The addition of this simple ribbon closure will make sure that nothing falls out of our precious art journal and the addition of customized background papers as a starting point and latex lace as a detail make this a tactile and visual treat even before we get started on really going to town on the art journal pages themselves. One of my favorite things about this binding method is that the pages will lie almost flat with no effort, making it a breeze to come in and draw, paint, doodle, and embellish all your wonderful art journal pages. I hope you give this do-it-yourself art journal binding method a try. 
I think you'll really be pleased with the results. I sure was. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until next time, bye.